The Sony XM5s were, let's be honest, a bit of a letdown. So can these be a viable alternative? People keep asking for a follow-up review of the XM5s from Sony, which I'll possibly do at some stage, but at the moment I'm far more interested in checking out what these are up against, and that's led me to the KEF MU7s. If you've never heard of KEF, they're a UK audio brand based in Kent. They've been around for years and years. I think they started in 1961. And they are best known for hi-fi and home cinema. I'm a huge KEF fan. I could bore you senseless about my HTB2 sub if you've got one you know what I'm talking about. But today I'm checking out their, I think it's their first foray into the world of over-ear noise-cancelling headphones. And what I really want to know is whether or not their undeniable skills in home audio and home cinema translate to this kind of product. Before I get started, I want to quickly mention an app that I use with headphones like these. They're not sponsoring this video, but I do have an affiliate relationship with them, so if you click the link in the description, I do get a little kickback. But the reason I want to mention it is because Brain FM has completely changed the game for me when it comes to productivity. Basically, you pop on your noise-cancelling headphones, you press play on Brain FM, and it pipes this kind of music into your ears, which honestly makes you more productive. I know this sounds like rubbish, but I promise you it's not. It has genuinely changed the way that I approach work, so I won't say any more about it, but if you want to check out Brain FM, click the link in the description and you'll get a nice tasty discount as well. Right, the KEF MU7s. Let's just quickly put them around my head while I reel off some specs for you. So they cost £349 in the UK, and KEF promises to deliver pristine, accurate, high-resolution sound on the go. They have full-range 40mm drivers. They use the Aptex standard for up to 24-bit slash 48 kilohertz high-res audio. They have smart active noise cancellation, Bluetooth 5.1, multi-device connectivity, and up to 40 hours of battery life. And you can get eight hours from a 15-minute charge. There's also voice integration, touch controls, memory foam ear cushions. Now that is a list of features and specs, and even the price actually, which mirrors most over-ear noise-cancelling headphones on the market. As is always the case, I want to know just how good are they from a sound perspective, noise cancellation, and living with them. The kind of key convenience factor that a lot of people overlook. When it comes to sound, when I first tried out the MU7s, I'm gonna level with you, I was a bit disappointed. They just didn't sound very exciting. And then I thought about it for a bit, and more importantly, I let them run in. That's very important with headphones, I don't talk about this enough really. When you get a brand new pair of headphones, or a pair of speakers for instance, they do need breaking in a bit. It's less of an issue these days, I think, but they, you still need some movement in those drivers to really kind of free them and get the best sound out of them. I blasted some music through these, and like I say, I sat back and thought, why am I disappointed with these MU7s? And that did lead me to headphones like the XM5s. And, and to be honest, lots of the headphones I've been reviewing over the last few months, I realized that these types of headphone are very colored. And by that, I mean they have a very EQ'd sound, which has never bothered me at all. As I've always said, I take headphones out of the box and listen to them as the manufacturer intended. And because they're consumer headphones, they tend to be tuned for lots of bass, really sharp top ends, and that kind of satisfyingly expensive, engaging, engaging is the wrong word, audiophiles will pick up on that, the kind of exciting, like I say, expensive sounding sound that people who aren't audiophiles will think is impressive. The best way to describe the sound that these make is they are very hi-fi like, and not hi-fi from 1995 where you know Sony would put mega bass on everything. It's a proper hi-fi sound. And going back to Kef's heritage and the fact that they are known for pristine, high-class, properly decent hi-fi systems and home cinema systems, that shouldn't be surprising. It's just a very detailed, balanced, pleasing sound. There's nothing outlandish about the bass response. The top end is a little bit too much for me out of the box. It could do with coming down a little bit. But across the board, they just sound 
really nice. That's why, unusually, I had to sit back and think, hang on a minute, I need to listen to these differently. And I'm glad I did that, because the more I listen to the MU7s, the more I really like them. As mentioned, there's loads of detail, loads of separation between instruments. If you're looking for a really bombastic, in-your-face sound, the MU7s won't satisfy you at all. If you're looking for a completely non-offensive, accurate, pleasing, detailed pair of headphones, these are really good. Now these are designed by a guy called Ross Lovegrove, who has worked with Kef since 2005. He's a Welsh designer, so he's put his touch on these headphones. And I suppose the nice thing about that is that he hasn't gone too mad. He's kind of respected what these kind of headphones should look like. He's not gone completely ridiculous with it and created something which didn't need to be done. He's just created a very nice looking, understated pair of headphones, which I think will satisfy most tastes. It's very hard to be put off by these or think they're too garish or... I mean, on the head, if I put them on my head now, I, I can't hear myself anymore, but I think they look great. They work perfectly with glasses, but where these really score is the comfort. These are one of the comfiest pair of headphones I've ever worn, I think. There's so much padding, so that memory foam that you get on the ear cushions here is incredibly comfortable, there's lots of it. That's one thing Sony got completely wrong with the XM5s. Look at the cushioning, those are the Sonys. That is embarrassingly different. Kef, top marks. Firstly, Ross, you've done a great job with the design. I think it look, they look fantastic. And secondly, although I would like some other colors, that would be nice, but the comfort, amazing. Noise cancelling, these are really good. We do live in an era now where most noise cancelling headphones over 300 pounds are good at noise cancelling, as they should be, but these are particularly good actually. And they do have two settings, they have standard noise cancelling, and then they have this, I think they call it active noise cancelling, which is apparently designed, like a lot of headphones, to adapt to your, env your environment, so it changes the noise cancelling based on where you are. Now, it's very different, different, very difficult to test that in the real world. I've tried both and it sounds the same with both. The one thing that's very strange with these headphones is that there is no, weirdly, transparency mode. And if you didn't know, transparency mode is basically when you press a button and it momentarily turns off noise cancelling and filters in the outside world. It's very useful for two reasons. The first reason is because you might want to be, a, you know, there might be occasions where you want to be aware of what's going on around you. And secondly, it's vital for telephone calls. Now the absolute gold standard for this is the AirPods Max. They have the best transparency mode on the market. Nothing beats it. These don't have it at all. There's no setting for transparency mode. It's a really strange omission and unfortunately if you use headphones like these for telephone calls it makes them a, a no-go really. If that isn't a big deal for you the noise cancelling is very good. Onto the convenience factor, which I think is incredibly important with headphones. Not enough people talk about it. And also, not enough people talk about the importance of the case. This is the Sony XM5 case, which I've thrown lots of shade towards, just for being so ridiculously massive and for having this weird crushability thing, which is totally pointless. Unfortunately, the Kef case is just as big. If not, slightly bigger. You can't really tell on this uh, on this camera, but it's it's a smidgen bigger than the XM5 case. I don't know why, well, I know why headphone cases are getting this big. It's because headphones, most modern headphones, only fold like that. The Sony XM4s, which are still my favorite headphones of all time, they fold like this. So they're kind of both ear cups go in as well. But most premium or, you know, mid-range noise cancelling headphones don't. They just fold like this, which means we get these massive cases. Putting that in your bag, it, it just takes up way too much space, as does the Sony XM5 case. It's a shame because it's a lovely case. It's a much better made case than the XM5 case. Lovely material. I love the Kef logo on there. And also, they've put the all-important magnetic flap in there. This is more of a trend these days. I love it. It's got this magnetic flap for your cables and stuff, which I love. So that redeems it slightly, but guys, why can't we have proper folding headphones? I don't quite get it. In terms of the rest of the convenience, it is good news, thankfully. So 40 hours of battery life, fantastic. Getting the eight hours from a 15 minute quick charge as well is great. Also, even though I'm not a big fan of touch controls, Kef have combined touch controls for play and pause and back and forth and stuff with physical buttons for power, 
Bluetooth and the ANC. So if you put the case to one side, these are a pretty easy pair of headphones to live with. The comfort alone actually, which is also part of the convenience factor, makes these a very good buy. So the big question, do the MU7s beat the XM5s? Well, there are some areas in which the XM5s beat the MU7s. The first one is volume, if that matters to you. So I found that I had more headroom in terms of volume with the XM5s. The XM5s also have that much fuller consumer ready sound compared to the MU7s, which again will work for certain people. The noise cancellation on the XM5s is better than the MU7s, but it's only by a tiny amount, which does speak very highly of these because the XM5s are still the kings in terms of noise cancellation. But the big win if you're gonna use these for taking telephone calls is the fact that the XM5s do have a pass-through transparency mode. However, the XM5s are still beaten by their predecessor, the XM4s, in pretty much every single area, which makes these a very difficult pair of headphones to recommend. These are quite an easy pair of headphones to recommend. And that's because if you can put aside the kind of bombastic, heavily EQ'd sound we've been accustomed to, they sound fantastic. They're one of the most comfortable pair of headphones I've ever worn, and I think the price is good as well. So the MU7s are a compelling alternative to the likes of the XM5s, and regardless if, like me, you are a huge KEF fan already, you're going to love these. However, if you're still interested in the Sony XM5s, keep watching for a link to my most recent review.